Amen. All right. But anyway, yeah, so let's get into this word, ABC T-shirts, uh, next week, next Sunday. Amen. I love this picture. Amen. And don't, don't get Hebrew Israelite on me and, oh, that's a white, why is it a white foot? It's because it had to be a color. There was a 50% chance that it would be black or white. And to be honest, my foot is that color. <laughs> Me and Bishop Logan was having a contest. Whose legs are the whitest? He won. He won. <laughs> He's mulatto. But yeah, my foot looked like that because I don't take my socks off for nobody. I'm wearing socks everywhere. I'd wear them in the, in the, in the shower if they made some shower socks. I protect my feet. I got beautiful feet. Beautiful are the feet of me. <laughs> Amen. My feet and my hands. I, you know, I take care of my hands. Are just baby smooth. My wife love my hands. They make fun of me in the gym because I wear gloves. So Landon and all of them be making fun of me and Kelly and uh, yeah, I'm wearing these gloves. I did not get 50 years old for my hands to get crusty. <laughs> it's too late. I've been going 50 years. Amen. Amen. So anyway, why am I talking about this? I can't even work my way back. I don't know how I got here. What was I talking about? Oh, the feet on the picture. Man, I was way off. Okay, the feet on the picture. Don't go Hebrew Israelite. This is just a picture. Amen. Oh, why the devil black? Because <laughs> he is in real life. Yes, the devil is black. The devil is the N-word. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> you know, you know he's black. Don't even front. Don't trip. Come on now. A white devil would have gave up a long time ago. <laughs> black devil go keep going ignorantly until Jesus <laughs> then he gonna try to go after that you gonna see Jesus and keep going you know only us do that kind of stuff amen thank God for my beautiful mother who's here and my beautiful mother over there thank God for y'all always coming and being here amen all right adamandbeliever.com forward slash when the devil hurts you hurt him back it's not coming up you know why it's not coming up because <laughs> I forgot to load it how about that I was gonna load it in my office, but my air ain't working in there. And got distracted by the heat. It was hot. So I tried to eat my food and get out of that. So amen. We'll, we'll have it loaded later. But just follow along with the slide. That's why we have all these beautiful, expensive screens everywhere that Eddie just had to have. They're everywhere. He just had to have them. So when the devil, look at somebody and say, when the devil hurts you, Hurt him back. Hurt him back. All right. Carnality is the problem that many believers face today. You know, the more carnal are, the more carnal you are, the less spiritual you are. But listen, the more carnal you are, the more spiritually messed up you are. So it's not that you're just less spiritual. But you're also not able to fight spiritually. So you know what that means? That means you can't fight the devil. Because you can't fight him in the natural. You have to fight him spiritually. So you can't be carnal minded and try to fight the devil. That's what's making me so mad. Boy, that Will Ford, did he not prophesy? That boy, he prophesied. I text him as soon as it happened. I said, Will Ford, you are a prophet. He texts me back a picture of Negro Damas. <laughs> See, 
Y'all too young. They too young. Y'all, they don't know who Negro Damas is. <laughs> but he prophesied it, and it came to pass. And now demons are manifesting all of the protests. No, listen. I'm not talking about demons manifesting because people are protesting. I'm talking about while they're protesting, demons are manifesting. I have video footage of demons manifesting in people yelling, my body, my choice. My choice! 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 Yeah. Now, as a Christian, if the people that I'm with around me start manifesting demons while we yell the same thing, I'm going to start looking around and saying, you know what? Maybe I need to cross the street. Maybe I'm on the wrong side. If demons are in the people fighting against what just happened. But preachers all over are putting it on Twitter. I'm a pro-choice preacher. What is that? Pro-murder preacher? Pro-shedding of innocent blood preacher is what you are. And in my Bible that you say you preach, in Proverbs it says that there are seven things that God hates and one of them is hands that shed innocent blood. Amen. Somebody not clapping. Well, it is my body, my choice, and it's your choice to not be in here either. Won't you make that choice? Let us make it for you. Don't be just hanging around. Go on and do it. Pull the trigger. Don't be scared. Pull the trigger. But yeah, so carnality, that train of thought makes a preacher that is pro-choice incapable of dealing in spiritual warfare how you gonna deal with spiritual warfare and you're promoting blood shed to strengthen your opponent see when it's a ritual sacrifice that blood is shed to strengthen that side so you're trying to fight against them with them Can I preach in here? Amen. And so I don't understand why a preacher would even think that he could be on that side and still be a preacher of the gospel. Isn't the gospel the truth? Amen. Nevertheless, I got to preach what God says preach. Amen. And then I knew we did the abortion thing. I had no idea Roe v. Wade would be overturned. Thank God it got overturned in gay month. That was, that was great for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, do it in June. Do it in June. Do it in June. They needed to be taken down a peg or two. I was in Papa Do's the other day just trying to eat me some fish. And one of them came, he he wasn't even waiting on me. I have my favorite waitress in there. So she had already started waiting on me and he walked up to the table. (laughs) Y'all, he twisted so hard, you could hear it. You could hear him coming. If I can hear you coming and you a man, I'm not supposed to hear you coming. I heard him coming. I guess he had his check or whatever on his side and it just flapped and he walked up to the table and I was like uh, somebody's already taking care of me oh okay I'll just make sure you was okay and I mean when he walked away you'd have thought it was a prancing pony and I, was, I was just looking I was like it's so hard to be it's, it's just so hard to be homosexual you gotta work all the time like it, 
you got to make sure everybody knows something that nobody should know. You, you got to make sure everybody knows the secrets that's happening behind closed doors. And nobody should know that. I was looking, boy, I almost pulled my phone out and made a gif. But thank God that abortion got overturned. In the month of June, Roe v. Wade overturned. And I heard Roe ain't he never even had an abortion. And then they saying, my body, my choice, can't no man decide what I do with my body. But wasn't it seven men that decided Roe versus Wade back in 60? Seven men. So they can decide it when. <laughs> Let me get back to this message. Amen. Amen. And you know what? If the devil, I said it last week, I'm going to say it again. If the devil ain't bothering you, you're not bothering him. If you're bothering the devil, then he's going to bother you. But if the devil bothers you, this is how you bother him back. I'm going to teach you that today. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Wait, attempting to fight a spiritual battle by carnal means is futile. It just don't make any sense. For the weapons of our warfare are what? Not carnal. Not carnal. This is why when you start praying, the first thing you pray is, Lord, take my personal feelings out of this. Take what was done to me when I was a child. Take my upbringing. Take all of the shortcomings. Take everything about me that will interfere in how I'm viewing this battle. Take it away. So that I can pray the right prayer without worrying about my feelings. That's how you approach spiritual warfare and get rid of the carnal weapons. Amen. Because carnal weapons aren't going to win the battle. But our weapons are mighty through God to the what? Pulling down of the stronghold. The world makes us view people as our enemies when in actuality it's the enemy that works through people to hurt us. 2 Timothy 2 and 6 And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of people? No! Out of the snare of who? The devil is the one with the snares who are taken captive by who? Him at his will. So it's not people. Look at somebody and say it's not you. Come on, look at somebody and say, I ain't fighting you. I'm not fighting you. I might be mad at you, but I don't need to be mad at you. I need to be mad at the devil. Amen? And it takes a lot of energy, and it's too hot in Texas to be walking around mad at somebody. <laughs> Is it too hot? It's too hot to be mad. Mad takes up cool energy. I need all my cool energy to keep me cool. You know, it's when you get mad, you get to hyperventilating and sweating. Then you got to fight. That's a whole lot of tussling in the heat. Nah, man, I'm going to handle things peacefully because it's too hot to be moving that much. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it's the devil who you, who's your enemy, not God. I mean, not uh, people, not your friends. Not these members. Amen. And look, we're blessed, but you know, it has its cons as well. But we're blessed to have people from all over the, the world, really, but mostly all over the United States to come together. But the con of that is everyone has a different upbringing. So people were raised under certain kinds of ministries. So a lot of times expectations are a little different in some areas. But as believers, we have to be the ones that want things to work out. So we take the high road or the high ground in working things out with that understanding that, hey, man, you may have been raised this way. That's the way y'all did it at y'all's church. So I got to understand where you're coming from. 
it may, be, it may not be an attack against you as much as it is a misunderstanding. Because there are variables to this type of ministry. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so we got to realize that so we'll know it's the devil when it's the devil. And when we know it's the devil, you got to tell yourself, uh-oh, that's the devil. Amen. But I got to keep loving my brother. I got to keep loving my sister. Got to find a way to get my heart right with this situation because it's the devil. Oh, this is one of my favorite pictures. You reap what you sow. Now, what's going to happen when he shoot this dude? Wouldn't it be better for him to work this out? Wouldn't it be better to put that bow down and say, bruh, can we come to an agreement and walk toward each other? Because if we walk toward each other, we can scale down this mountain together. But if we oppose each other, we're both in trouble. Ain't that picture something? It's preaching without me saying anything. Don't you shoot him. <laughs> Amen. But that's how important we are to each other in the body of Christ. Amen. We, we're supposed to bring that kind of balance to one another. But look at somebody and say, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. I tell people all the time, be careful. Be careful what you say. Be careful how you talk about people. Be careful how you hurt people. Be careful how you fight. Because that stuff don't go away. It will keep coming until you correct it. When we pay people back, we are hurting ourselves. When we pay, look at somebody and say, when we pay people back, we are hurting ourselves. Because we cause ourselves to be judged by how we have judged others. So when you pay somebody back, that same judgment where you pay them back, that's how you're going to be judged. You're going to get the same judgment. Yep. Matthew 72. For with the judgment ye judge, yep. ye shall be judged. Yeah. Is that plain? Yes. I'm going to read it again because I didn't get no response. Yes. Folk in here looking like, for with, the, with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be what? Judged. judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And the crazy thing is, the older you get, the more you learn this. Right? Stuff you used to do and say and all, all that stuff will come back on you. And it never feels good. Amen. The devil fights you so that you will stop following God. That's the whole point. And when I say stop following God, I'm not talking about you just leave God altogether. I'm saying stop following God in a situation. Yeah. Yeah. On your job, somebody keep pestering you and messing with you. And then you get in the flesh and react to them. You're not following God. Right. And you know in 2022, getting in the flesh could get you got. Folk crazy. Folk looking at a reason to kill somebody now. They're mad at their upbringing. They're mad at what their parents didn't do. They, they feel like they should have, their parents should have done a better job. Whatever. So they take that out on everybody. They're tormented constantly. So you like the wrong fuse. Amen. The closer we get to the end, the more forgiving you better start being. Because folk crazy. Folks, I'll snatch you up. They're crazy. Amen? So the devil fights you so you will stop following God. That's his plan. Don't follow God. Follow what you want. Do it the way you want. Say it the way you want to say it. 
Address it the way you want to address it. Do it the way you want to do it. And once you do that, God steps back and lets you handle it. And the devil sits back and claps and applauses. Because that's what he wanted in the first place, for you to stop following God. You ever got so mad at somebody where you just start reacting, but in your mind you know you ought to? I guess everybody's safer than me. You, it's almost like you have an out-of-body experience. Who is this nut? And why won't he shut up? He just going in. He going in. <laughs> shut up, me. You're making it worse. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you, you just know because God has instilled his righteousness in all of us. We know what to do. He will even use those around you to say and do things to make you doubt that you have ever really heard from God. That you know God told you something, but voices around you making you feel like God didn't say it. James 1, but let a man ask in faith with nothing wavering. This is the only way you're going to get anything from God is if you ask in faith with nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is what? Like a wave. You ever seen a wave of the sea? It's there one minute and then what? It's gone. That's how you are if you waver. Especially in this hour. So you don't let a voice or you don't let. And look y'all. And I'm, you know. As you scrolling through the internet and. Watching everything. Yo, guard your heart. Amen. The very thing that you were solid on becomes liquid sometimes because you're just watching and listening to the wrong stuff. Right. The very doctrine you grew up and the foundation that was planted under you yes. cracks sometimes yes. because you're listening to too much. Yes. Amen. Amen. Not saying that there aren't good preachers out there and all that, but man, the autoplay need to be disabled. Because they'll send anything your way, especially if they know you've been tripping. You was doing good till you watched four hours of Facebook watch videos. They'll just keep popping too. They'll keep popping up. Dude throwing baskets on people here in the supermarket. You watch 20 of those. <laughs> Remember you? I could just throw it. Yeah. And you're just watching, watching and laughing and watching. You look up the whole day is gone. <laughs> just watching a bunch of foolishness. And it gets real foolish. And all of it stage too. He watching the cars, avoid accidents. Ooh, that was a close one. You gonna watch a hundred of those? Ooh, ooh, that was closer than the 80th one. But... Yeah! God, look at somebody and say, guard your heart. People can say little things that are very seducing and persuasive. And a lot of times people don't even know they're doing it. They're just speaking their own mind, but their mind has not been consecrated by the blood of Jesus. So they're going to say something at a time when you didn't need to hear that to mess up your faith in that hour. Amen. So you got to be careful of the long conversations you're having with folks that aren't spiritually where you are. Amen. But they can say little things that are very seducing and persuasive. But you got to understand a lot of times because their heart is not guarded, the enemy is speaking through them. Amen. Somebody ever told you something and you go back to them and say, man, I really didn't like what you said. What? I don't even remember that. Yeah, you said it. You don't remember you said it. I don't even remember it. That the devil took their tongue and spoke through them. Had you up all night long. And they sleeping sounding like a riding lawnmower with the big motor. Yeah. 
Our minds can become plagued with false words and perceptions of ourselves to cause us to question God's plan for us. James 1 and 7, for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord if he's in this place of doubt. There is no spiritual fight if you doubt. Amen. Amen. Understand something. You're not fighting for victory. You already have victory. Amen. So you fight with victory. But if you don't believe you are victorious, then you enter a fight that you can't win. Because you just gave the devil power to be victorious over you because you're not aware of your own victory. We don't get in a battle wondering if we're going to win. And the fight has already been won. We don't get in a battle worried about losing to the devil when the devil has already lost. See, we talk about the prophecies all the time and everything the Bible says is going to come true. Well, the Bible said that the devil's power was taken and given to Jesus. All power in heaven and earth, everywhere, was given unto him. So if you're approaching a battle and you worried, then that's doubt, that's wavering. And you can't expect to win that thing. And God wants to see us fight victoriously. Amen. Amen. It's like a, a man with his son. You want your son. You want to see your son accomplish some things on his own Amen. without your help. Yeah. That's how you know he's becoming a man. You don't want to do everything for him all the time. You want to let him grow into that. Figure that situation out. Bro, I'm staying out of it. And I'm going to let you handle that. Get some hair on your chin. This going this, to this gonna do it. And you can have her on your chin. And hey amen. Depending on your nationality. That could be 11, 12 years old. But you can have hair on your chin. And not have no manhood. So you need to earn them hairs on your chin. And cheek and face and chest. Let's let you handle this. See what happens. Bro, be a man. Walk into that. Deal with that situation. We're going to sit back and watch you. Amen. And sometimes you got to watch him fall. You got to watch him fail. You can't carry your kids around with the, by their arms all the time while they're trying to walk. <laughs> no, you got to let them try to walk. Then they're going to fall. And you got to get up, walk again. Amen. When they fall, you're not going to get them up and put them in a chair or with wheels. Or you just use this from now on. That way, I know you're not going to fall. No. And this is what God wants to see from us. So he'll step back sometimes. Let's see. Let me test them or allow them to be tested. So he'll let the enemy. Let, let's let the enemy sift them on this one. Let's see what's really in there. Yeah. And if God gave us everything, we'd never talk to him. <laughs> Some stuff he want us to go get. Amen. God ain't taking your test for you in school. You didn't study at all. Oh, but, 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 uh, and that's how you gonna be when them questions come. When you get that scantron. I'm stupid. God ain't gonna take no tests for you. Move over, son. I got this one. Why the Lord ain't coming? Look at your scantron. It's already finished. My God. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is so good. <laughs> no, you got to study for that test. Amen. Now, there's been times when you were real sleepy, something happened, emergency happened, whatever that happened, took you away from it. God will give you grace for that moment sometimes. He'll step there like, I understand things happen. 
I'm here with you. But you still got to give God something to work with. Amen. And that's every walk of life. God wants you to do it. Operate. Look at somebody say, operate in your victory. If you're victorious, operate in it. Well, I filled out the paperwork for this promotion, and I know I'm qualified for it, but man, I just don't know. You don't know. Let God speak to him. Let God go do the work for you. Boy, God will get in that computer and make it just... They come to you like, I don't know how you got this position. But the computer said, I need to give it to you, so I'm going to give it to you. And in your mind, you say, I know. God did this for me. Because I'm victorious and I'm more than a conqueror. I've been diligent. I've been working hard. So that's what's wrong with this generation. They're entitled to everything. Somebody's supposed to do everything for them, give them anything they want. This will work out. No, 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 no. It's not how life works. Not at all. Learn it now so you don't have to learn it later. Amen. And God wants you operating in victory. Because he died to give you victory. Amen. Can I keep preaching in here? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Because of the spell of unbelief that the enemy has unleashed on our world. Y'all believe there's a spell on our world? I told y'all back in 2020 when they were doing the spell. What the spell was. But because of that spell of unbelief, it doesn't take much to make many fall victim to the wrongful self-images and ideas. Just because there's a spell perpetuating it. It's witchcraft. Witchcraft is waiting on you to doubt. Then you'll begin to doubt everything. Last week you loved this church. Today you just... (laughs) What happened? Witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah. It happens that quick. Don't take much. Because there's a spell already hovering over everything. Waiting on you. To use the yard of your tongue to change your whole environment. The Bible said death and life and the power of the tongue. That means you can shape your whole environment by what you say. Yeah. And the devil gets you saying the wrong thing. That witchcraft spell will come change everything about your life. What you once liked, you don't like no more. People you used to like, you don't like no more. You think there's something wrong with people that ain't never done you wrong. People that ain't ever done you wrong. Come on. Now you got a problem with them. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Oh. You know, you go to hug certain people and stuff. And, you know, in my mind, I'm just thinking, oh, well, they got a problem with me this week. Okay, how you doing, sister? How you feel it? But in the next week, ooh, pasta. That man said, woo, woo. Mm-hmm. Then the next week, how you doing? <laughs> man, ain't got time for no moody members. <laughs> you the mood. Hey, man, I didn't marry that. So I don't have to put up with it. My wife don't act like that, so I just go be around her. Hey, man, give your old stank hug. Take your little raggedy hood. You got a problem with me this week because something I preached? Something I said? And I've been doing this for how long? The same way? Anybody, anybody ever went back and listened to like an old, old message and it sounded like it was last week? It doesn't change here. Oh, but you said, <laughs> to the side for your husband. Amen. But a double-minded man is unstable in all his way because of this spell. People are just falling victim. 1 Timothy 4 and 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall do what? Depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. So it isn't just regular spirits, but it's conning spirits. 
They're getting conned by spirits. Tricked by spirits. Tricked. Look up, dog. What happened? Man, I wish I had made that decision. You got tricked. You got seduced. That's what seduction is. They're just coming and making you do something that you wouldn't normally do. Say something you wouldn't normally say. And doctrines of devils. Instead of targeting people and trying to be a spiritual vigilante against their attacks, target the devil. There's so many vigilante believers now. They have old websites where they just going at folks. Spiritual vigilantes. But target the devil. Why don't you target the devil and make him pay? He the one that did it to you. You kill the person that did it, somebody else going to do it too. You ain't going to get rid of the problem by getting rid of people. The devil obviously knows you. Oh, I'm about to preach now. He knows how you move and think. He's had all this time to watch you. So he knows that if you get rid of one thing, he's going to bring that thing back disguised differently. Yeah, that's why you keep ending up in the same position, making the same mistakes. Because that same attitude is carrying over to the next because the devil knows you. He walks about seeking whom he may devour. I mean, he's taking notes. He's studying you. He got your number. Second Corinthians 10 and 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Pulling down what? Strong holds. We pay the devil back by not giving him access to our mind and thoughts. This is how you pay him back. You ain't gonna pay the devil back if you giving him access to you. So I gotta preach the truth on hip hop this coming Friday, and so I gotta go back into the letting the music do it. You're letting the music give the devil access. But me and my wife, we supposed to listen to Shirley Caesar while we in the bed. What's wrong with that? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Anybody but Shirley. question is too personal anyway like man I don't even want to think about you and your music in your bedroom preachers shouldn't even be preaching that stuff that ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with it man you ought to know if the artist singing that song worship the devil you don't need to be listening to that artist at night in your bedroom I mean common sense will tell you that if the song is cussing you out then you shouldn't be listening TV got ratings. Do you talk like that? Will you talk like that in public? Then why would you listen to it? Look, see, somebody. Hey Amen. So uh, some stuff we shouldn't even be, uh, you know, come on. So you're not going to pay the devil back and you got his music. When we keep the mind of Christ and react based on God's word, we send the darts of the enemy back to him. When we react based on what? That's hard. Because sometimes you get too mad to react based on God's word. You get so mad and God says, don't say nothing, forgive him. You're like... But Lord, did you just see that? Like the Lord don't see everything. But did you just see what she said to me? And the Holy Ghost like, Un undo your lips. And forgive. 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 
And listen, y'all, you, you don't let an incident or something that happened between somebody, you don't let that alter your life and who you are in Christ. And ain't nobody worth that much where you done change your entire disposition. That was too easy for the devil. But when we keep the mind of Christ and react based on God's word, then the devil is like, dog. The fiery darts come back to him. Ephesians 4 and 23. And be renewed in the what? In the spirit of your mind. Yeah, man. That's, that's the devil burning. Declaring what we believe is the greatest payback against the enemy. Declaring that he is defeated and Christ is exalted burns his fiery tail even more now let's get this straight you gotta be in the right disposition to do the declaring you can't declare that the devil is defeated in your scary voice yeah you in the, in the, in the room at night with a night light brighter than the regular light it's daytime in your room. Yeah, and then you hear something. <laughs> devil, devil, de devil, devil, you've defeated. You defe you're defeated in Jesus' name. The devil standing over your bed like. No, no. If he's defeated, then he can't hurt you. If he can't hurt you, then you shouldn't be afraid of him. I'm not afraid of nothing that can't hurt me. If a dog run up to me, rah, 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 and he ain't got no teeth, I'm going to be like, <laughs> what? No back legs and no teeth. I'm going to kick that nub all over the yard. I'm not scared of you. First of all, you can't catch me. Second of all, if you catch me, what you gonna do? Got them wheels on the back? Ain't no dog with wheels that came off something else. I don't think they make dog wheels, sister Amy. So they took the wheels off something else. No, nah, bro, that's not a scary image to me. I know y'all feeling sorry for me and think I'm cruel, but I'm using this as an example. <laughs> Don't send the AS PCA after me. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, I'm not afraid of a lion. I don't care how big he is. If he don't have no claws and no teeth, he don't scare me. I'll wrestle with you. Amen. Somebody like, I'm still. I'm still running. Just cuz. Declaring what we believe is the greatest payback, declaring that he is defeated, burns his fiery tail. But you got to declare it with confidence, knowing that you really do have victory. Wait, wait, you know what stops you from declaring that you have victory? Sin. Sin, man, when you're in sin, you don't have that pop with your declaration y'all know what I'm talking about y'all know what the pop is that's that confidence in the name of Jesus devil go if you done slipped off in something um, the devil like what what you say I mean, you know, it's, 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 what what devil getting stronger and louder Yeah, he don't ever know when you're going to need that power and that authority. That's why you can't be practicing sin as a lifestyle. You up in the club and uh, somebody demon-possessed, head spinning around while she on the pole. She's spinning around the pole, her head spinning the other way. You know what you're going to do? You're going to get out of there. You shouldn't have been. What you doing? What you doing in the club? 
What you doing in a strip club and you a Christian? What you doing watching movies about strip clubs and you a Christian? Uh oh. What you doing listening to songs about strip clubs and you a Christian? See, see, they just want to, hey, Pastor, I now I don't go to no strip club. That stink. I ain't going. Yeah, but you watch the Players Club every Friday night. And you know that's beyond ratchet. That's beyond ratchet. It ain't even a, I ain't spend but $500 making that movie. Gosh, you're going to go to hell. Don't go to hell over a $500 movie. My goodness, CG or something. I, but yeah, so watching it is just like being there. It's the same sin according to Christ. You lust after in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Boy, they don't like these holiness messages. They like to find a crease. Now, I don't go and I don't watch the movies. But man, that Cardi B song. Then you might as well go. Because she's coming to you. Somebody sent me a video of her crying. <laughs> I wish I had done all the stuff that I did. My daughter saw all this stuff and I, I just wish I had done all this stuff. It's like, I feel sorry for her. I don't. I don't feel sorry for her. Because right after she made that video, she was back somewhere being Cardi. I don't feel sorry for you because you have a moment of, oh, I wish. You enjoying the money, the lifestyle, the fame. No, no, I'm going to be with the people that turned all that down to fall in love with Jesus Christ. That's the person I feel sorry for if something happened to them. If they have a moment of weakness, if they get into some trouble. I say, hey, but they made the decision to stick with Christ no matter what. Can I keep preaching in here? Colossians 2 and 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. This has already happened. Christ has already spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. And he's already triumphed over them. So if we be in Christ, we are triumphant. Can I keep preaching in here? Summary! Amen. Amen. You know it's my goal to stick it to the devil. I want to stick it to the devil. I want y'all to be prepared to fight in spiritual warfare. I want to give you every tool that is available in the spirit realm to fight the enemy. That's, that's what I want. I want that for you. Because the more he messes with me, the more I'm going to learn about him and the more enlightened y'all are going to become. So if I got to stand back and just let him do what he's going to do, let him do it. If it's going to enhance what I know to enhance you, then to God be the glory. Some things the disciples had to go through. Some things they had to experience to even be able to write what they wrote. Can I keep preaching? Amen. To truly get revenge against the enemy, you must use the spiritual weapons of the Holy Spirit. You must be filled with God's spirit to have power to fight and repay the enemy for all that he has done to you. Amen. Filled with, look at somebody say, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You know, folks, th that's not complicated. Because you get filled with everything else you want to get filled with. I don't understand how people complicate being filled with the power of God. But they can get filled with everything. They go to the buffet at Golden Corral and get full of picked over food. Full. You get full, you go, yeah, you get full, you watching 
uh, uh, Sam Jackson's movie. You're getting full of cussing. You're listening to secular music. You're getting full of demons. Then you can get full of everything, but then when it comes to the Holy Ghost, you don't understand the process. Well, the process is easy. Can you deny yourself? Take up your cross and follow him? There's a path to the Holy Ghost. There's a path to being filled with this power. And you know how to do it? Turn some stuff off. Turn the plate over. Well, I just, you know, I just really would rather you just lay hands on me and, and just let it ooze all through, through my body. And, you know, but I want to keep all my stuff, you know. It ain't going to work that way. You're going to have to die to yourself, your will, your plan, your crazy acting self. You got to die to that to allow the power of God. Room to even be in there. He said, seek and you shall find, knock, and it shall be open. Have you begun to seek? Yeah, some of y'all would be in a very different position if you had sought the Lord before you reacted. Seek the Lord. Seek him. Amen. It ain't the pastor's responsibility. You got to, I can't give you the Holy Ghost. Well, if you had one of them lines that people, no! <laughs> no, we're not going to, you're not dying to yourself in here. You know why you're not dying to yourself in here? Because very little of the real you is in here. Oh, I, I, will, pre I will preach this thing. Yeah. No, you got to die to that you after you leave here. Make the line in your house. Move the furniture and walk up in your house. And go to dine in your house. Where it's lit. <laughs> Young folks like, what? Yeah, where well you, you know, that's, that, that's where it has to begin. Because that's where the real you really exists. You come in here, a lot of you just showing us the, the, the highlight reel. The Hikamashanda reel. You come in here, can he talk? How you doing, sis? And then get home cussing, smoking, drinking. Shooting. <laughs> Just shooting. Yeah, folks. Yeah. So don't, don't come in church for a show and try to make a show of religion in here. Go home and show the devil who you are. Get in your car and show the devil who you are. Go on your job and show the devil who you are. Talk to your friends on the phone. And show the devil who you really are. So you got to be filled with God's spirit to have power to fight and repay the enemy for all that he has done to you. You don't have to go looking for him and you don't have to even focus on him. So I'm not telling you to go home. Okay, devil, where you at? No, I'm not looking for him. I don't, I'm, not look, I'm not walking around looking for a demon to cast out. Amen. I ain't looking for the devil. I'm not looking for his kingdom. I'm not looking for nothing he does. No, I'm not that concerned about him. So you don't have to go looking for him and you don't have to even focus on him. All you have to do is believe on Christ and you will defeat his attacks. So if you stay focused on Christ, you are getting him back. Listen, you already got his attention when you chose to love instead of seeking revenge. When he saw you do that, ah, got his attention. <laughs> you already got his attention when you chose to love him uh, instead of seeking revenge. You were on his wicked mind when you chose to be delivered instead of repeating sinful habits. You got his attention. You wrecked his plans when you decided to hold on the truth and not let go. You stomped on his head when you chose to forsake all to follow Christ. 
You shook his kingdom when you prayed for your enemy and forgave the ones that hurt you. This is how you pay the devil back. When the devil hurts you, you should hurt him back. We hurt him by loving the Lord with all our hearts, soul, and spirit. When we love God's way and choose his plan for our lives, we become the soul that God gained and the enemy failed at getting. This burns him up figuratively and in the end, literally. Amen. Romans 12 and 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Now this is supposed to be how we treat one another. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Don't think you something. Don't think you're above anybody. Recompense to no man evil for evil but provide things honest in the sight of all men and if it be possible as much as lieth in you live how peaceably with all men dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay saith the Lord. That's why we don't pay people back because he said, I will repay. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. So this is how you pay your enemy back. If he hungers, feed him. Somebody's lips is tight on that. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt what? You getting him back. By not letting them get to you. <laughs> That's what the scripture say. You're getting them back. Man, I got some folk get so mad because I keep loving them. Deacon, they want me to hate them. They want me to hate them. They do things that under normal circumstances would require a bullet. <laughs> but I keep loving them. They don't know how to process it, Jeff. I keep loving them. Man, no, nah, man. I forgive, man, I love you. What? You love me? But if that enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing thou, in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with what? I'm going to say it again. Be not overcome. Listen, don't be overcome of evil. Don't be mad, angry, and let somebody tick you off. But overcome those feelings with good. Amen. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. <laughs> Paying back the devil don't mean you go after him. It don't mean you looking for him. It don't mean you picking a fight with him, retaliating against him. None of that. All you got to do is what is right and what is good. There are, I know there are a lot of people in here that's struggling with people. And I want to pray for you today to get the struggle with people out of your heart. Make this the fight that it's supposed to be, a spiritual battle. If that's you, just come up. If you're struggling with people, words, what they say, what they do, just how they treat you, all of these things, man, you got to let this out your heart. Amen. Some of y'all have kids now. Do you know you will transfer that to your children? Your children will be messed up because of what you hid in your heart. So let's get that out right now. Stuff against people, you got stuff. You just, no, don't let, don't give people that kind of power in your life. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Anyone else? Come up. We're going to believe God. Man, do you know just by you walking up here, you have hurt the enemy. You have hurt the enemy. If he was allowed to yell in here, he would yell. If he wasn't worried about security, taking him out, 
he would yell because you just stepped in his neck by making this motion to come get hatred or whatever it is out of your heart and truly forgive truly love truly have peace it's a big step anyone else it's a big step man big step let me ask you to bow your heads father god i just thank you lord we thank you each and every person that has come real problem real situations real hurt real pain people have just done things they shouldn't have done said things they shouldn't have said whatever these situations become unmanageable by us because we're humans so we can't manage them in the flesh but God we've come to you because you are the one that can fix these situations you are the one God that can go before us in the spirit realm and do what needs to be done by your power you're the one God that can even prepare a heart full of hatred so that when we talk to them we can find love in there you are the one God that can change someone that is fighting us and hurting us change their mind their motive and if they don't change you can change us change us so we'll understand that this is the enemy we're fighting and that enemy is not a person so God right now take that name out of our heart take that image take that face take that person out of our heart God they won't bother us anymore they won't lead us astray anymore they won't cause us to come out of our own behaviors anymore they won't cause us to sin anymore they won't lead us down the wrong path ever again God we give that to you right now we give it to you right now just in your silent voice just call that name or just speak it out and let them go I let them go right now let her, I let go of what they said I let go of the hate curse they put on us I let go of everything that they did against me I let it go right now in the name of Jesus Father God right now I let it go not to be bothered by it again leave it here in the name of Jesus and God we give you praise glory and honor because you love us so much that you will give us the tools to fight with and you'll give us understanding and wisdom in these situations so we won't get caught up in the spell that is over this world we thank you lord for your truth in this hour in jesus name now lift your hands up high right now and father god that person we speak the blessings of the lord on their life father god we speak prosperity on their life god fix their heart so that they can prosper fix their heart so they can be forgiven fix their heart God so that they can move like they should move they can behave like they should behave God we bless them and not curse them Father God we call their name believing that you will restore what they need restored fix them in the name of Jesus we pray thank you Lord thank you Lord amen Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put your arms around somebody and say, I don't hate anybody, but I love everybody. Say, I forgive everybody. And I bless those that cursed me. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all, we are a church of reconciliation. That's who we are. And the reason we're a church of reconciliation is because Christ has reconciled us back to God. And because he's done that, we will be reconciled we will forgive we will walk in love and we will not hate each other hallelujah 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 hallelujah